hyaluronic acid, which is <laughs> another uh, substance that you study. Uh, yeah, could you give us a quick overview of hyaluronic acid and kind of why it's so important? Hyaluronic acid also is a polysaccharide. Interesting. Mm. I when we found Foucault, we thought, oh well, mm. we know another molecule that is somewhat similar structurally. Mm. Um, it's a polysaccharide um, uh, that is a major non-protein component of extracellular matrix. Uh, so it is present in our bodies. It fills spaces between cells. Um, and um, it's important for just making connections within tissues. It also interacts with cell receptors. It can send various signals to the cells uh, that may be uh, signals from neighboring cells. It could be some mechanical signals as well. Uh, and um, it gives elasticity to our skin, to blood vessels. It, there is a lot of it in the synovial fluid. So with arthritis, mm -hmm. there are some problems with hyaluronic acid. So it's a very mm -hmm. important molecule. And we stumbled upon it when we were studying naked morat, uh, mm -hmm. which is uh, the model of healthy aging. And first we studied naked morat and we asked the question why they almost never get cancer. Uh, mm -hmm. And we found that hyaluronic acid is very important for that purpose. Uh, in the naked mora, they have 10 times more hyaluronic acid than humans. So when we look at the tissues, they are full of hyaluronic acid. And mm. then uh, hyaluronic acid is a linear polysaccharide. Uh, if focoidin can be branching, hyaluronic acid is linear. Uh, but the lengths can may differ. And in the naked mora, the molecules are about six times longer than in humans. So they have more and, and also bigger molecules. Uh, and this can be critical because very long molecules have different effects. They provide more elasticity. Uh, they also make um, sort of more resilient mesh, if you <laughs> if you will, mm -hmm. uh, in our tissues. And uh, when cancer cells metastasize, they have to break out of this mesh. And it's more difficult for them to do with longer molecules of hyaluronic acid uh, surrounding them. So it has anti-metastatic property as well. And it also has uh, anti-inflammatory property. Long molecules are anti-inflammatory, short molecules are actually pro-inflammatory. And when we have some wound or tissue breakdown, we have uh, short pieces of hyaluronic acid that are pro-inflammatory. So this is like, in this framework, um, it kind of becomes clear that in the naked morat, having longer molecules actually is very beneficial for longevity. It prevents cancer. It reduces inflammation. Um, um, but our first study was really limited to cancer. We showed that it's important uh, to protect naked morat from cancer. And then we kept wondering, is it also important for longevity or is it just mm. cancer? And we were also wondering, can we transfer this mechanism to other species? And that's when we made a mouse mm -hmm. that expresses naked more at hyaluronin synthase. So it makes more hyaluron. And we made this mouse and it took us uh, almost 10 years to fully characterize the process. Uh, and we found that the mouse lives longer and mm -hmm. uh, primarily it, it also has less cancer. But longevity, and you know, maybe it's also good for cancer resistance as well, but we found the biggest molecular change was reduction of inflammation. There was a lot less age-related inflammation in these mice. Stress is a part of life, but it doesn't have to control you. One way to manage stress is to make sure you're getting enough magnesium. Magnesium is a mineral that plays a role in over 300 biochemical reactions in the body. When you're stressed, your body uses up magnesium more quickly. So how do you break the vicious stress magnesium deficiency cycle? I've been taking magnesium breakthrough from bioptimizers and it's made a big difference for me. It helps me stay calm and focused during the day and to sleep better at night. Magnesium breakthrough contains all seven forms of magnesium, which are essential for optimal absorption and utilization. If you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed, give magnesium breakthrough a try. It's a simple and effective way to improve your overall well-being 
and it's risk-free because Buy Optimizers offers a 365-day money-back guarantee. Just go to magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern and enter the code MODERN10 for 10% off your order. And for a limited time only, you'll receive a special gift with each purchase. This offer is only available on magnesiumbreakthrough.com slash modern, so be sure to check it out today. Thank you for your support. So the only thing you put in was HLA. And so HLA on its own, hi, well... No, I, HA. 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 Oh, yes. You don't call it HLA. Yeah, HA. Okay. I don't want to guess it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay. So <laughs> hyaluronic acid on its own increased the lifespan. Yes. Um, yes. Just one gene from naked more. So you looked at the... Uh, at the proteins that were expressed, I think, in the mouse to see whether they were the same as other forms, uh, things like rapamycin and calorie restriction. Were they the same or were they different? I mean, was HLA working in a different way than perhaps other longevity substances? Um, so we looked at these mice that overexpress hyaluronic mm. synthase. Yeah. Um, they had also increased levels of HA, of mm. hyaluronic acid, um, which is what we wanted them yeah. to have. Uh, but the increase was quite mild. We didn't mm. make them into naked moras. They didn't have as much as naked moras. Right. And, and, and there was a reason for that. And the reason was that in the naked mora, they not only make more HA, uh, but they also turn it over more slowly. Mm -hmm. So the degradation is not as active as in human tissues. Uh, so the mice had a mild increase and it already was beneficial to them. So that makes me very optimistic. Uh, now to your question is like, how was it working exactly? Mm -hmm. uh, we compared the transcriptomes. So we looked at different transcripts in these mice and compared them to uh, wild type mice, we compared them to other interventions like rapamycin and mm. other chemical interventions. So there were some similarities, but it was quite distinct. So I cannot really say, oh, it worked exactly like rapamycin. No, it worked in its in its own way. Mm. Interesting. How would, so again, this was transgenic. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, how could this be translated into humans? Yes. Yeah, so again, here uh, there may be different approaches. Of, you can do gene therapy, and that's a possibility. Um, but maybe like more straightforward or even safer approach, which we are pursuing at the moment, uh, would be to develop inhibitors uh, to the enzymes that degrade HA. Because that's mm. why I mentioned the mouse Okay, we had some benefit, but perhaps it would have been even greater benefit if we slowed down the degradation, mm -hmm. make them more like naked morads. Yeah. Uh, and, and this way we can uh, develop small molecules uh, because another way, of course, would be just delivering HA. You can inject it. Um, mm. And uh, people make injections of HA already for years, for example, in uh, osteoarthritis treatment. People are receiving injections in the knee. Mm -hmm. um, there are also various cosmetic treatments to smooth out wrinkles with HA, like a filler. Mm -hmm. uh, but all of these strategies, they are very topical, local. Mm -hmm. You inject it or apply it locally, and that's where it stays. Because HA is a big molecule. It, it won't go around the body and distribute everywhere. Uh, but for longevity and health span, uh, we want a systemic treatment. Mm -hmm. And this is why we were exploring other strategies than just direct administration of HA. Um, so sm small molecule inhibitors of hyaluronidases, so those enzymes mm -hmm. that chop HA into pieces, I, this looks very promising. So we are right now testing molecules of mm -hmm. this kind in mice. Right. So do we make long chain hyaluronic acid and, and then it gets split up or i mean we, will yes. we make it? yes basically yes we do that's actually quite interesting so we make long molecules which is which means 
it's not uh, that unique to naked mole rat. We can also make long molecules, but we, we break them up. <laughs> for some unknown reason. Um, yeah, for some unknown reason. Maybe, again, as in evolution, sometimes there is no reason. There was perhaps no reason to stop us from doing that. Um, because what we also find that in the naked mole rat, um, degradation of HA is really slow. And we also find it in other subterranean animals. Um, and we hypothesize that animals that live underground, uh, they needed to have very elastic and strong skin because they rub against their tunnels all the time. Um, and they develop some strategies to make more HA in the skin and then in the rest of the body just by, you know, <laughs> just for the good measure. And then it started also benefiting their longevity. Uh, but in humans and other above ground mammals, we never had this kind of um, evolutionary pressure. So we didn't develop this propensity to make a lot of HA in the skin and the rest of the body. Interesting. So the HA was because they were underground and like longevity is just a side effect. That... Uh, yeah, in a way it was side effect, but then also creatures that live underground, they tend to have longer lifespans. Mm. And the, the reason for it, again, from evolutionary perspective, is likely that underground they don't have as many enemies, so mm. they can live longer. And that's why they develop molecular mechanisms to support this long life. And mm. so we have both factors together. <laughs>